the guy that lives in the log cabin behind me. Uh, him and his dad were mowing the lawn and they stopped and watched us work for a little bit. Took, took quite a bit of interest in what we were doing and where the wood was going, which was neat. And we mentioned how those sleeper logs that we found in the uh, basement holding up the floor, how they were once part of an old, older log cabin on the property. And the guy goes, you interested in log cabins? And Elias and I have been wanting to get our hands on a nice two-sided hewn log cabin for quite some time. So he gave us the address. He said this week he was going to burn it down. So we're going to go check it out and, and see if it's something worth saving. Elias and I have never taken down a cabin, therefore, we're not quite sure what to look for. We don't know what people want when they're buying cabins. In fact, we're not even quite sure how to put it back together once it's down. So we're a little bit clueless. Really haven't seen it done much. Watched barnwood builders and they take down cabins on there and rebuild them. There's a lot of uncertainty when it comes to knowing what to pay for something like this. Elias and I, again, have never done this before in regards to cabins. This is our first one. And so we're just not really sure what to pay for it. But thankfully, Elias has been doing some research. I have been watching a lot of Barnwood builders at the time and we're like, hey, they do cabins. The owner came to us, asked us, would you guys ever consider cabins? We're like, yeah, we would. And I was kind of excited about it, but I would, didn't even know where to start as far as how it comes down. Is it pegged in? What's it going to look like? What do I look for when we go to see it? It's like, I don't have to identify rot and a completely deteriorated cabin or not, but... Let's just hope Elias can figure it out once we get there, because I'm at a total loss. Yeah, we are absolutely clueless. Out. Could be some bug damage. Look at this sucker. 15 inches of face. Wow. That's not good. Mm, bathroom products. Toilets in good shape. Oh yeah. Ooh. Dang. That's like that's like 50 bucks. Turn the demo job for him already. <laughs> From what I've seen, we want it. Really? I think so. Really? Who's going down that hole? Bye, Ezra. Bye. It's nice knowing you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Good logs down here. One side is hewn. Dude, these can beats. I wonder if these are still good. Ugh. Bro, how much you paying me? Cow tons. Time to go inside. See what it's made of from the inside. Only tell so much from the outside. Hmm. To be honest, this would be our first log cabin, so we don't really know what we're looking for. We're just looking for as little rot as possible and good joints. No major bug damage. I think there's enough there where we could save it. Let's go check out the last two sides. Bottom one looks a little too far gone. Like it was pretty exposed, but that, wow, that's pretty. All right, one more side to check out. This is the best side yet. 13, 12, 12, 10. Do a whip to show me how excited you are. 
Really? That excited, huh? I just, yeah, I mean, it's cool. Tell them why you're so excited. Because I haven't done a cabin yet. <laughs> why do you want to do a cabin? Because I've been watching Barnum Builders. <laughs> there it is. And that's fire. Mark Bo fanboy. Oh, I'm more of a Johnny Jet fanboy. Hey, I can respect that. I wonder how many people drive by this structure, look at it, and think, man, when's that ugly looking house gonna just get tore down or fall apart? It is so neat to just have the opportunity to see these buildings and to kind of have some understanding of what kind of work and effort went into putting them up and then being able to reclaim these. So we're gonna go back in the car, talk with Elias, and talk about what kind of offer we're gonna make for the for the structure. And then we'll talk to the log cabin owner and, and see if he accepts it. We uh, took a look at that, that cabin last night. We decided to swing over before sunset last night. Um, and yeah, we're definitely interested. So we called the cabin owner and we made him an offer we didn't even really know what kind of money we could make off of this or if we could make any. Shot an offer of 800 bucks and like, you know, we can't really do much better than that at all right now. He's like, well, I can do better than that. And I'm like, Shh. And he goes, how about I just give it to you? And we're like, oh, that kind of, you can do better than that. Load of the semi on the next project, so we're here at the cabin. Ezra and his wife are having a baby, so this is me and H. H, H is back in his third return to 310 Timber Company. We're gonna get this thing down in a couple days. I'm super excited to do our first cabin, and kind of, I mean, it's a lot of it's hidden, so we're gonna be kind of peeling back the layers and seeing the beauty underneath. And it'll, it'll, it'll be a lot of fun, so. Super excited to walk up on the cabin. We've honestly never seen one firsthand at this point. Some of this joinery work that was completed by these pioneers in the 1800s is pretty awesome. Just to think of the resources they had to pull together to cut down the trees to build this cabin and notched out every joint and I uh, just had a lot of care in their work and their craftsmanship and just excited to be able to save the history of it. One key thing with this building is we can't break any windows. Okay, we gotta keep them intact. So, we should be fine on that. Find some treasures in these barns. What'd you find today, H? Found some trash. <laughs> but then also I found a kitten. Oh, hello kitty. Hi kitty. <laughs> so right now we are tagging all of the logs so that uh, if this is to be rebuilt, which hopefully that's the plan, um, we know where all the logs were. We're tagging good logs. Even the bad logs will have to be replaced. Uh, because if they're going to be replaced, we want to know which ones we're missing. And so we can uh, try and match that with a spare log. So that's where we're at right now. Got the whole second floor walls off, just with just the telehandle. A little, little flick of the wrist is all it took, and uh, coming apart nicely. There's a decent amount of rot, um, and some of the beams will have to be replaced, which is a bummer. But now our next problem is just figuring out what we're gonna do with all the junk on the top floor. We need it out of the way and get to those first four logs. H and I worked that next day, got the whole main floor of the logs out of there, 
the the rest of the debris, pushed it into the foundation uh, to be burned, and we got it on a semi on its way back to Cedar Falls, where we're planning on building it. Elias and I, we got the logs back to our yard, our lot in Cedar Falls, Iowa. The next step is power washing them, and then taking a couple steps back and taking a good, long, hard look at them. And just praying and trying to figure out some way that we can do justice to these pioneers who built this original structure and figure out a way to rebuild it. We're a little bit clueless on this and we don't want to necessarily just restack all the logs up, chink it and call it good. We want this to be something that can last for generations. We want to do it right. So that's gonna take some expertise that we necessarily don't have right now. And I started thinking about setting the foundation, cleaning the logs up, recutting the notches, replacing the, the logs that were in bad shape. Got overwhelming pretty quick. Once we power washed this cabin, we discovered a lot of hidden rot, unfortunately. That was the exact thing that we were trying to avoid, uh, but it just so happens about 50% of the cabin was actually rotted out. To be honest, this would be our first log cabin, so we don't really know what we're looking for. We're just looking for as little rot as possible and good joints. And so we set that project to the side and we went on a barn tour in Northeast Iowa to go find more barns, and we just so happened to find another pioneer-built dovetail cabin. And this one's all oak, and it looks like it's in really good shape. It's just crazy to think that hiding behind these 1,500 layers of wallpaper are some beautiful hand-hewn beams. So it's just mind boggling to think that people wanted to cover this up at one time. Newspaper from 1938 with a Folgers coffee ad. A mountain of flavor in every spoonful. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Pretty sturdy. Sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> So we've got some of these bottom boards now exposed. Elias is taking care of that addition. We are ready to start taking the rest of the siding off. It looks like a really good structure. There's a couple spots where you can tell water got trapped in, caused some dry rot. That's a little bit concerning where we may even need to replace the entire log. So, but the sill plates are no good. That's to be expected, but everything else looks pretty pristine. We're pretty excited about this purchase. Back after this was originally built, and its original purposes, the styles changed and people didn't like the log homes anymore. So they'd cover it up to make it look more like a modern at their time stick frame construction. And so they'd put these furring strips to make it, you know, plumb on the sides, and then they'd put the siding on top of that rather than just having exposed logs with the chinking. So we gotta peel that away, expose the history and the rustic desired wood underneath and 
we're pretty happy with it, happy with it as it's coming apart and um, few rotted spots, but I think it's going to be a really nice cabin and excited to see um, how it comes apart and to see it actually rebuilt, which is super exciting to know that very soon this is going to be reconstructed somewhere else. we just do oh yeah didn't film it uh we tagged up all of our logs um we just used a logging tag and it's just for ease of the rebuild process know what went where and uh yeah so we're all tagged up we're ready to start taking this thing down and um it's gonna go quick from here so dodger dodger again coming in hot Spoiler alert, we found our guy, and he's actually someone from our past. We played football with this guy. He went to Wyoming to ranch for a little bit. He went to Canada to learn how to build these log cabins uh, from a true expert craftsman, and his name is Seth. And Seth has agreed to partner with us on this first project to pass on the knowledge and expertise we need in order to breathe new life into these pioneer built structures. Think about who's going to teach you how to build a cabin from scratch with your hands. You don't think about some guy in skinny jeans and uh, quarter zip has to quick grab his vanilla latte from Starbucks before he starts his day of work in his parka. Think about a mountain man. Some guy who just looks like he rolled out of his own cabin bed, fried some bacon and eggs, took his ax out, started felling some trees. And if that isn't the description of Seth Snicker, I don't know what is. It's just fine because what I'm gonna end up doing is cutting this back only having about a half inch stick out. Mm -hmm. You just have to be aware of that so you don't end up having it come out like right here. Again, this is all this is for, so that way I can look at it and make sure I'm going the right direction. All right, notch cutting race. Seth is still the master. Uh, that is why he is the maestro. <laughs> <laughs> you need the right tools, meet the right people. And you need to learn how to do it the right way. Otherwise, you're just gonna keep working upstream. Seth's definitely was that guy who ended up becoming the one that was helping us spearhead this project. And he's passing along the those skills of building this, these cabins to us. And uh, you gotta have the right tools and the right people. Otherwise, it's gonna be very frustrating.